Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Craig Perra from themindfulhabit.com, and this is Sex Afflictions and Porn Addictions. Thank you so much for being here. And today, we are going to talk about risk, particularly the risks that you are taking in your life to feed your compulsive self the sexual risks. And I want to examine those risks, in particular, talk about you men who are going to massage parlors. You are just one sting away from being arrested. I don't care how much money you have. Let's talk for a little bit about New England Patriots owner, Robert Kraft. One of the most powerful men in American football was charged today on two counts of soliciting prostitution in connection to a recent law enforcement bus on massage parlors in Florida. And these massage parlors were used for prostitution and human trafficking. This just comes days after the Patriots won their sixth Super Bowl and days after Kraft appeared at the NBA All-Star Game. So listen, let's see. I'll share with you what this article said. Jupiter Police Chief Daniel Kerr said Kraft was charged with two counts of soliciting a prostitute and that a warrant for his arrest is with the state's attorney's office and will be sent to Kraft's home in Massachusetts. He said there is visit video evidence of Kraft involved in sex acts in a massage parlor on two occasions. 25 people were charged with soliciting prostitution at this spa in Jupiter, Florida. And, and, and the detective also said the fee for 30 minutes, let's think about the risk. <laughs> Guys, if you're going to a massage parlor, there is a chance that you are participating, supporting, aiding, and abetting human trafficking. For this particular massage parlor, upon investigation, they found that the woman were living there. And you walk into these places, you know, There's an air of sketch, an air of shade around them. And you know, and you're overlooking, maybe the woman doesn't speak English. You have no idea if she's being sexually trafficked. And think about the risk that you are creating for yourself and your family. You run the risk of catching a disease. You run the risk of aiding and abetting the trafficking of human beings. You run the risk of getting caught. And if you get caught, you run the risk of losing your job, of losing your marriage, of being exposed in the paper. Brothers, it is time to stop. And I don't care. Well, I care. I was going to say, I don't care about the excuses that you're making. Bounce those excuses that you're using to justify your trips to the massage parlor against the risk that you are creating for yourself and your family. What's the justifications? You deserve it. It's a great escape. It's fun, not harming anybody. You don't know that. You don't know the conditions of employment that these people have. And by the way, they see you, they see 20 other people that day. Think about the life of the person that you are exploiting because you have money and they do not. I have been preaching for years, particularly since a conservative administration is in the White House. They crack down on vice crimes more in a conservative administration than a uh, liberal one. It's human trafficking is an issue for everybody, thank goodness, and more and more issues are, you know, more and more the awareness around this issue and law enforcement is doing something about it. And you do not want to catch yourself in the crossfires. You do not want to be calling me when you are at your lowest point after you've been released from the police station and then you get home and then all of a sudden there's some press people waiting to talk to you. Guys, it is a freaking nightmare. If it happened to Bob Kraft, it can happen to you. Just stop. Let's take a breath and think about the risks 
that you are creating. And, 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 and so as you think about those risks, right, I don't want it to stop with, well, I can be arrested, I can get in trouble, I can upset my wife. There's a moral question here. There's a moral question. Are you exploiting these women? Are you aiding and abetting sexual trafficking? But let's put that aside for a second. Let's put that moral issue aside for a second. What I'd like you to do right now is to reflect on how you feel when you are driving to the massage parlor. Hearts beating faster, exciting about what's going to go down, finally getting a break. You've had a terrible day at work. You're so stressed. Your wife's upset with you. The kids are driving you nuts. This is your six flags. Not hurting anybody. Right? All those rationalizations are there. You've got tunnel vision. You are completely ignorant of the fact that somebody may be recording you as you walk in the door. Ignorant of the fact that may, there may be cameras in there. No, no, but it's, it says um, shiatsu. Massage on the front door. Nobody knows. Brother, law enforcement knows because those same places are getting reviewed online in this massage parlor underbelly. There's all sorts of websites and they're seeing what people are posting. Lulu did this. We, we did that. This woman did this. And, and they've got the sex acts. They know people are writing those reviews. So you're, you're not immune. You're not... Um, uh, uh, free from prosecution. You're not being nearly as sneaky as you think you are. And when you look at this arrest report and you look at this investigation and you know that this guy was sitting outside and then they examined the trash in the place. They examined the garbage. They did a trash pull. And in that trash pull, they found condoms. They found napkins, which appeared to be covered in seminal fluid. Those, that, those napkins were tested, and they did, in fact, have semen on them. They know. It's only a matter of time. Not everyone gets arrested, right? So, 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 but ask yourself this. Right, let's forget about the moral. Let's forget about the risks of being arrested. I don't want this to be all about prohibition. I don't want this to be all about you're being a bad boy. This is, you're naughty. You're, you, no, no, no. Look at you doing sex trafficking, Mr. Blister. Like, you better stop that right now. I'm just throwing it out there for you to think about. But I want you to think about, so that feeling you have when you're driving there and you get yourself naked in this room, you disrobe, you don't know if there are any cameras in the room, you don't know if anybody's watching you, you're with a complete stranger, maybe you've seen her before, but I know absolutely nothing about this person, and then engaging in sexual activity, you put it on your credit card when you leave. So, so compare that feeling of euphoria, of, 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 of oh, I, I hate saying it this way, but, but I think you know what I mean, um, Single-mindedness. I was going to say mindfulness, but that is an insult to the word. The single-minded focus that you're in, that tunnel that you are in, that leads you to that place to ignore those risks that we talked about. Compare that with the feeling that you have literally seconds after you orgasm. Shame. Self-loathing disgust and then you get then you then, then how does it feel walking out of the place looking around wondering if anybody sees you know there's like a a, a a restaurant over here you could bump into someone over here now you're scared now you're like ah and you feel like crap you feel like garbage and then you say to yourself i am never doing it again and you continue to beat yourself up you feel like crap yet you're too focused on the break of habit part. You haven't made any new habits. You haven't figured out what those needs are. You're not getting those needs met in a healthy, constructive way. And then that shame builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds into the only way to get rid of it is to do it again. And the cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. How do you feel when you walk in the house after you've done what you did and avoid eye contact with your wife?
or your girlfriend or your fiance? How do you feel the next time that the two of you connect physically, wondering, could I get a disease? Might I not get a disease? It is impacting your life in a big way. If you're listening to this podcast, you know that it is impacting your life in a big way. You're not living up to your potential. You are not being the best version of yourself that you can be. You are not firing on all cylinders. You are underachieving. I don't care how successful you are and what everybody sees from the outside. You know. You know that this isn't right. This isn't the man you want to be. This isn't the son that you'd want to raise or, or certainly encourage your daughter to go into the massage parlor industry. Fucking ridiculous. Preposterous. But you've built up these walls that prevent you from evaluating those risks. So let this scare you. I get a lot of calls now. A lot, a lot of people call me after something like this happens. It wakes them up. Like, what am I doing? Bob Kraft freaking got arrested? <laughs> Along with 20-something other people? And there was another bus not too long before this. I thought I saw 77 people being arrested. So, but but I, 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 on this one, all these men were arrested. Videos of him engaging in sex acts? Brother, you are better than this. Use this crisis. Use this slap in the face that Bob Kraft is giving us as a gift. Receive the gift and do something about it. Take action. Take action. Words mean nothing. Oh, I'm not going to do it again. Ah. If this behavior is compulsive, if this behavior is impacting other, other areas of your life, which it almost always is with virtually everyone who calls me, I've never gotten a call where someone says, I am overachieving, I am successful, I'm firing on all cylinders, and I'm a sex and a porn addict. Does not compute. Does not compute this behavior, that powerful part of you. That powerful part, that most pleasurable part, that life-creating part, that part wired in our evolution, it is powerful. How are you using it? So just put the risks aside for a second and ask this question. Is this a healthy expression of my sexual self? Is this healthy? And for the overwhelming majority of the answer is no, and if the answer is no, then you've got to do something about it. Use this crisis where you lack personal agency and control, where your emotional intelligence is low, where you do not have control over your behavior, where you feel succumbed, um, compelled to do it again and again and again, despite thousands of promises that will never happen again. There's an opportunity here. And for the men who are reaching out, I've already gotten a few calls this morning, and uh, so, so proud. You know who you are. So, so proud of you guys taking action, jumping into a community and doing something about your problem before, before you jeopardize everything that you hold dear. So let's take this craft story as an opportunity, as a lesson to wake up. I want to shake you right now. Wake up. You're better than this. This ain't you. You got more fire in the tank, more fuel to burn in positive ways towards the life that you want to create. There is no one struggling with compulsive sexual behavior and truly living their life's purpose. Truly living their life's purpose. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you're not successful. That doesn't mean you're not doing good things. But this touches a part of your soul, and that part needs to heal. 
That's where we want to go. Remember, the behavior is the symptom. I've yet to work with someone who primarily had a libido problem. Seven years. Hasn't happened yet. and It's not going to happen with you. So the greatest risk beyond the arrest, beyond losing your family, beyond losing your job is losing your soul not living up to your potential, dying with regrets. Now, some of you are going to keep doing it, and then you get arrested, and then you reach out. And, 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 and many of you won't, right? There's only a limited amount of law enforcement. Some of you are calculating right now, thinking to yourself, well, if they bust it over here, they're probably not going to do it again over here. Or, that's how my mind worked. That's how my mind used to work. But I'm living my life purpose. I'm living a great life. And it would be an honor and a privilege to help you do the same. So go to themindfulhabit.com. Check out my free training video, the four transformational shifts that you must make to end your compulsive sexual behavior. And if you need help, reach out. Call me. Call me so you do not end up like Bob Kraft.